Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a tutorial for a plant growth animation inspired by Cinema 4D. There is also a similar variation inspired by Houdini. They use extremely similar concepts. And in this tutorial, I will focus only on type C, which is kind of one step before the initial type A. First, I want to discuss the concepts and the, the obstacles encountered along the way. The animation taught in Cinema 4D is very easy. But in Blender, it's quite difficult because it lacks relevant features. There is one minor issue and the two major obstacles that need to be solved. The minor issue is animation offset. The same leaf instances need to be enrolled at different times. In Blender, we cannot really offset keyframe animations like in Cinema 4D. But this is a minor problem because we are working in a node system where we can drive the animation procedurally and offset it easily. The major issues are first, Cinema 4D has a jiggle deformer, which adds inertia to geometry for interesting effects. This was solved quite a long time ago in 3.6 and later became the initial deformer. Second is the band deformer which I have recently tackled and discussed. Blender is very weak in this area, and even a basic modifier version is not directly available in geometry nodes. So it had to be built from scratch, along with many other technical difficulties and the design challenges. After many years, I finally succeeded, and I'm here to talk about it. You will need to use the presets, which are free from the link in the description. Otherwise, building the function from scratch when it's easily available in other software is not very realistic and productive. So here we are in Blender Node Editor. Let's start with a plane, adding the geometry node tree. I will clean up the group inputs and start from scratch with a curve linear. I will uncenter it, set it on the z-axis and make it longer, like uh, 4 meters. Next, we instance leaves. There are different ways to create leaves. You can model a real leaf, but for simplicity of this tutorial, I will just use a plane that has an image texture on it. You can download this free image texture from the link in the description as well. Uh, if you do not have all these kind of textures, you can just use the plane to replace it. I will go to the UV editing tab and make the UV only show a single leaf out of many other options. Also, I will model it slightly to make the patio part sticking out from the leaf. Also make sure the base of patio is in the wood origin for our later instancing. I will also make the leaf less wide. Again, you can model a real leaf. I'm here just to make the tutorial a bit simpler and we are going to improve it later with band deformer. Then we go back to the node editor and bring this model into the node tree as object info node. You can visualize the leaf we pulled in the node tree. Also make sure you have enough subdivision to later deform it. We simply use instance on points to instance it on the curve. Next, I will go directly to the band deformer to prove the concept. You can always polish your animation later, but if you cannot get the most important parts working, you will have wasted a lot of time on less important details. We add the band deformer, make sure it's set to instance mode, and choose the axis combination that folds the geometry. I find that YZX combination is rolling in the axis we want. For better visualization, I will temporarily reduce the instance count to three so that we can clearly see what's happening. I will set the band deformer offset to zero so it bends from one end instead of the middle. If you simply slide the angle, it will be clamped at two pi, which is essentially a full circle. But I want it to roll further. So I will use a larger angle, like 9, and enable inward pull to make it feel more like a roll. You will need to tweak these parameters based on the size of your leaves. In my case, I will reduce the distance slightly. Now if you slide 
the offsets, it will roll. And if you enable clamp offset, it will unroll itself in the defined direction. This works, but more importantly, we want a delay in the rolling and unrolling. So we need a fourth. There are many fourth options available in the presets, but in my opinion, the best one here is the directional fourth I've made a tutorial about. I will set it to the z-axis and select an empty object called controller. I will also change its display type from the sphere to arrows for better visualization. We are to unroll the leaves, so we will output this fourth to the offset. You can immediately see its effect in distinguishing different instances based on their position along the z-axis. By animating this empty, we can unroll the leaves sequentially. I will quickly add keyframes to animate it along the z-axis. We can also increase the count to have more leaves now. You can also scale the empty up or down to change the gradient of influence from the directional fourth, making the transition more slowly and smooth. I will also move the controller a bit lower to start with. While this looks okay, it doesn't fully demonstrate all the requirements of the band deformer. For the second test, I will add another brand new band deformer to chain them sequentially again on the instance, but this time on y-axis. Now, if we only look at this band deformer, instead of being very flat, the leaves also fold along the midline. However, if we turn on both deformer, you will see this change disrupts some of the parameters we set earlier to cause some kind of clipped shape. Nevertheless, in the final render, most overlapping parts will be removed by the leaves alpha. So the animation still works well. I will increase a bit of the angle and probably make the leaf a bit wider. Also, another way if you want to solve the clipping, especially if you are using your own real model of leaves, is to increase the additional offset. It will make your folding result a bit larger, but it will solve the problem very well. In this case, we are using image alpha, so we don't need to change any of these. Furthermore, you can add more band deformers on the same axis, but in negative angle to add more sense of depth. But now, if you play the animation, you will find the patio is moving out of the plane, which are visible mistakes that you unlikely want. So this is the part we need to deal with the clamps. Let's add uh, the remap 0 to 1 to the 4th and set the minimum to 0 0.15. And we need the 0 0.15 on the other band deformer too, because they're using the same axis. If you visualize the clamp mask with or without our remapping, you will see the patio is included or not from our rolling event. That covers one of the major obstacles. This is also the largest obstacle over these many years. The second major obstacle is the initial deformer or jiggle deformer in Cinema 4D. This one is very simple as I already taught it in many tutorials such as spiderweb shoot. You just add it at the end of the animated node tree. Make sure to realize the instance, either using the built-in toggle or a separate node, so the vertices are accessible for the initial deformer. When we play the animation, you can see that it now has an interesting automatic jiggle at the end, which is not otherwise available without it. You can adjust uh, the parameters, but I usually keep them at their default values. A very important note is that the initial deformer uses a simulation zone inside. It requires you playing the animation to work, and it caches data on the timeline. If you change upstream parameters in the middle of cache, 
the results won't update in the viewport. So you will have to go back to the first frame without the cache to see the update. While working, it's often better to mute the node to bypass it and then enable it again for the final render. At this point, we've basically proven the concept with this setup. The remaining work is mostly parameter tweaking to polish the animation. For example, I will also link the directional fault to the scale. Due to certain limitations, you cannot set the scale to zero in this specific case with the initial deformer. So I will remap the zero to one range and raise the minimum slightly to around 0 0.01. I will also add a float curve to skew the interpolation. So the scale ramps up earlier and faster, allowing us to see the scaling effect while rolling is still visible. However, this may make the two events look slightly disconnected. Alternatively, I will use a separate directional fault with a directional offset. Increasing it slightly this way, when we use the same controller, the second fourth is offset a bit further in the assigned positive direction. And we can smooth the float curve. As a result, the scaling really happens earlier, allowing us to see the smooth scaling and the clear and rolling events for the initial deformer. Here, I don't want the leaves scale consistent along the curve. So let's add a spline parameter to the remap. The spline parameter goes from zero to one from start to the end of the curve. So we need to remap this relationship with a revert. Finally, I will make the straight line more interesting. You can replace the inertial straight line with any custom curve. In the last tutorial about bending review, I've drawn one custom curve. This time I will increase the resolution of the curve and use a set position for a sign function on the spline parameter to displace on X and Y axis for an appropriate amount. We can visualize the curve better with the bevel curve node and join everything at the end. Right now we have too many leaves being instanced. I will lower the instance count using resample curve. At the end, as the curve is no longer a straight line, we use align rotation on curves for accurate orientation based on the curvature. On top of that, I will combine Euler rotation with a float range to change the rotation offset. Set the step to 90 degrees with decimal shift zero. If we replay the animation, you will see that each leaf rotates by 90 degrees from one point to the next. You can, of course, adjust these values freely to suit your needs. Overall, this is not a very complicated setup. The original Cinema 4D tutorial only takes about four minutes, but many of these features aren't available in Blender. Without ready-made assets such as band deformer or initial deformer, you have to build everything from scratch, which can take days or even years. There are many development stories behind the scene, but they are too wordy for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.